service dog mistakes. But first, I'm gonna go get some magnesium and I am taking you guys with me. Let's go. excited. Well, okay, he was excited right before I tried to show you. I'm sorry, buddy, but this one, this video is kind of going to roast you. Come on, you want to come with me? Do you want to get roasted? <laughs> Trying to get buddy to cooperate for the shot and he won't because he's an alert. Oh, there's the alert. Really had to make sure in my eyeball, huh? Okay, that's a migraine alert. Are you done? Yeah, thank you. His tail is vigorously wagging. Of course he stops when I show you. Thank you, buddy. That was a migraine alert. That is not the alert that he messed up on that I'm gonna tell you the story about today. Thank you, buddy. That is the alert that I'm gonna tell you about today. Pots alert. Let's go sit down, huh? Hey, buddy. Oh, good boy. Can you get on your bed, please? Good boy. I got ham so he would join us. Don't be so eager, my gosh. It's just your favorite food in the whole world. Good boy, easy. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jen, and this is my service dog, Betty. Betty is my service dog for both migraine and POTS, and, oh, and that's, that's another POTS alert. The heart thing is going. I don't have my phone on me or I would show you my pulse. Um, <laughs> should I wait? Let's wait a minute. There's a chance the episode will just resolve on its own, seeing if I can just breathe through it, let my pulse regulate. He's alerting again now. Well, this, I guess, um, should I just talk about this? Getting more eager, getting more nudgy. This is an alert that I am going to faint. When he was just licking, that's heart rate problems, this nudging means I'm probably kinda gonna lose it. I'm not gonna give any commands, I'm just gonna let this right out. This is not what I was expecting to record right now. I started to feel a little bit of the clamminess. I felt a little bit of the spin, you know, like when you're about to fall asleep, that like, woo. I got just one itty bitty wave of that I certainly feel short of breath. I could feel my heart rate, but I feel like I'm equilibrating again now. Maybe he doesn't feel like that though. This might be a migraine alert, which would make sense because I do get more potsy on migraine days. Good luck. I love this eye contact. Good look, buddy. Good boy. I like that he is distinctly ignoring the ham that's next to me and instead paying attention to me and my eyes and my face and whether or not I'm gonna be all right. I feel very safe with him here because he's so good at letting me know where I am. He didn't nudge until right before that little weird wave. He's only licking when my heart rate is high. I can offer my hand when I'm okay. Well, right now I'm not okay, but I can offer my hand when I'm okay and he's not licking. Like that little bit of gauge is so like, it's invaluable. I can't even describe what a big difference that makes in my life. Are you good? See, that is him refusing to alert. He's like, give me some treats. Yeah, no, sorry. We're not gonna do that right now. Okay. I don't wanna give him treats right now because I don't want him to start alerting just for the sake of getting treats, even though he's doing really well. So I'm gonna head him tell him he's doing a good job, but I don't really wanna award him because I'm a little bit concerned he's kind of focused on those treats. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jen. This is my service dog, Buddy. And today I wanna tell you a story about when Buddy 
messed up big time and was tasking on the wrong human. Okay, so let's unpack that. What do I mean when I say buddy tasked on the wrong person? Tasked. That's kind of a weird word. A service dog is a service dog because of their training to mitigate that disability. And a task is just the name for that trick that the dog knows how to do to help the owner. So one task that you just saw is Buddy licking my hand. That task is an alert. He's letting me know ahead of time that I'm having some palpitations or that I might faint, that I might get lightheaded. What I call a faint is a drop in blood pressure. Also, a service dog messed up? What? Doesn't that mean he like fails or something? Doesn't he fail service dog school if he fails? No, service dogs actually mess up a lot. Service dogs are not robots. They're just dogs that have been very highly trained, but they're still prone to do normal dog stuff. And I'm really excited to tell you guys this story because when Buddy messed up, of course it was a little bit dumb because he was tasking on the wrong person, but it was actually pretty smart because that person was in the right position for him. So. Let's get into the story. Buddy, where were we in our story? The part where you give me ham. That's right, we were here. No, thank you. So, I have a two-year-old daughter. Well, I have a two-year-old and a one-year-old daughter, but this is about the two-year-old daughter. My husband and I were playing with her after work one night, and we were teaching her over and under. My husband was sitting on the floor in a pike position, flat on his butt, legs out, for DPT, for the service dog. But it wasn't for the service dog. It was for the baby to just jump over his leg or hop over his legs. He was the overstation. And then I was standing up and I had my legs open like this and she was going through my legs, under my legs. I was the understation. So she was going over and under and then under me back over dad. Cute, huh? The problem with that is that I can't stand up for a very long time or else I start getting these palpitations. I start getting short of breath. I will lose blood pressure. I will faint. But I do stand up a lot because I have Buddy nearby and Buddy warns me before these things happen. So we're playing with baby A. I am trusting that Buddy will tell me when something's going on. Sure enough, I'm standing up for too long. He comes over and he starts licking me and nudging me and telling me that I'm about to have an episode. Typically, I kind of ignore him a little bit because he gives me a lot of warning and I know by now how much I can push it. And Usually I'm in the middle of something. I don't want to just immediately drop it, but he got really insistent and eventually he sat down next to me and he started putting his paws up on my leg and he was just trying to whack me, trying to get my attention. And I was like, man, Buddy, why are you doing all this? I don't want to do this right now. But that's good. He's trying to do that. It was a proper response to something that my body was doing. That was good. That was not the mistake. You ready for what he did next? This is where he messed up. After Buddy alerted me that I was about to faint, Buddy left. <sighs> oh. Right as I said that, he dropped his head onto my lap. Look at this. Do you feel guilty? Don't feel guilty. It's okay, it was an accident. Yeah, you guys, I am dead serious. The next thing Buddy did after he alerted me, he got super frantic. He's like, Jen, you've got to sit down. He left, he walked away. And I was like, <gasps> I mean, I'm shocked because Buddy is trained to not leave when I alert. Look at him, he's like, let me, let me explain myself. Yeah, you want to explain yourself, Buddy? Come here, it's okay, you can come over here. Come here, okay, okay, come here. No boy, sit. Go ahead, tell them, tell them your side of the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where did he go, right? That's your side of the story. Where did Buddy leave to? Buddy left to my husband. Thank you, thank you, that's a migraine alert. It means I'm gonna get a migraine later. Thank you, buddy. Buddy left to go to my husband. Before you're like, oh my gosh, that's so smart. The service dog got the husband to help the wife. No, guys, um, ah, that's actually not what Buddy is trained to do. When Buddy alerts, <laughs> excuse me, sir. When Buddy alerts me, he's trained to stay there with me. He's trained to wait until I sit down. And when I sit down, he's supposed to lay over my legs and do deep pressure therapy. Why the heck did he not hang around to do the deep pressure therapy? Those of you who are thinking, do you see it? Do you see it in your mind's eye? Are you connecting the dots? It's because my husband was already in the position for deep pressure therapy. So when Buddy left, 
He went to do DPT on my husband, who was in the position that he needed. Smart, right? But dumb, right? Are you ashamed? He's like ashamed and proud. He's smiling, but he's not looking. You did good, but like only sort of. Here's why I think this is so smart, and I will use a different command to kind of illustrate my point. Buddy is also trained to touch. So if I put my hand like this and tell him touch, he will touch his nose to it. He's not here or else he'd probably do it. But also, I don't necessarily need to say the command in order for him to touch. If I look at him and I go like this, he will also come and touch his nose to my finger. He doesn't need me to say the word. For DPT or deep pressure therapy, it's sort of the same thing. I can tell Buddy to cover, but also if I'm having a faint and I sit down, he knows automatically to cover when I make that position. Just like with the command touch or the hand signal for touch, Buddy will respond to either the command cover or the seated position, which is the signal for cover. In a way, when my heart rate went up and my blood pressure dropped, he sort of heard the command for cover. That's usually what cues him in that he's about to cover. Because remember, he knows about the faint and the covering and that we're about to do all that before I even do. He knows that if he alerts and I'm about to do all that stuff, that eventually I will sit down and I will say cover. He will do it even if I don't say it. So the fact that my husband was already in the position for him to receive the cover means that he was just going on autopilot. He was like, okay, the heart's going, we got the alert. Next, we do the nudge. Next, look for the legs, lay on him. I mean, I don't blame him. He was just kind of going. That's very, very smart. But also like, dude, I'm your human. I'm your handler. It's me. He should always be tasking on me. So that mistake should not happen. To be clear, service dogs do need to specifically bond with their handler so that mistakes like this don't happen. However, with me being so sick, my husband has to do a lot of Buddy's walks and I think that makes it so Buddy is sometimes a little bit bonded to him even though he only ever works in public with me. He has a special bond with me. He knows that I'm the one he alerts and works with, but I think that especially at home, he can get the roles a little bit confused. When he's off duty, he can get those roles a little bit confused because he's more of a family dog off duty. The one thing I am very strict with with Buddy is treats. I give the treats. I give the food. I am the provider for him. And that helps keep our bond. Nevertheless, every once in a while there's gotta be a mistake. So this was one of Bud's. Kind of a fun story, huh? I love stories that shatter misconceptions, like that service dogs are always perfect. I love stories that shed light on what it's actually like to have a service dog at home. I know that's kind of weird, it's unique. A lot of people are curious about what it's actually like having a service dog at home. So, you know, this is just one of those cute little stories that very rarely sees the light of day. I hope that you enjoyed hearing it. If you like stories like this, if you wanna hear more service dog mistakes, I made at least one other video of them, maybe even two, where I shared some of Buddy's best mistakes. So click the card and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>